Glory be to God, everyone. Glory be to God. It's a beautiful day. We give God thanks for everything. Welcome back to GOE Ministries, where this ministry, we put God over everything. This is why it's called GOE. It's God over everything. Family, friends, over everything. The message that I would like to put into your mind today, it's about the churches disobeying God. Churches disobeying God. And yes, you heard me right. You have churches now that's just completely disobeying God. They don't want to do what God say. They want to do what they feel they should be done. They want to do what they feel is right. So that's what it's about. That's This is what this message is about today. It's very serious, my brothers and sisters. If you pay attention to what's going on with the churches, it's very serious. Most of these churches has basically gone against God. But Paul already told us that this was going to happen. And the crazy part about it is I don't hear no preacher, nobody speaking on the subject of the churches disobeying God. We already know the church is the body of Christ. Jesus is the head. The church is the body. And the churches have gone against God. And when I really saw this happening, I had to ask, why? Why is this happening? Why is these churches not doing what God wants them to do? Why? But I came across the scripture and I got all my questions answered. Let's get into that right now. Remember, like I told you before, write these scriptures down so you could study them on your own time. The first scripture that I want to go into about the churches disobeying God, rebelling against God, is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm going to read that. I'm going to read the first few verses just to give you an understanding of what's going on. Let's get into that. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Father God, may you give us understanding of your word. In Jesus' name I ask this. Amen. Let's get into it. It's titled, The Man of Lawlessness. This is the coming Antichrist that's coming into the world. He's already here. He just hasn't revealed himself yet. But pay attention. Listen very closely. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, speaking of Christians, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us, whether by a prophecy or by word of mouth or by a letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Let me stop right there. Paul is speaking about the rapture. When Jesus come into the clouds and the dead in Christ shall rise first and those who are who are remaining alive shall be caught up with Jesus and Jesus take us to heaven. And then after that, God judges all the evil people on the earth, those who took the mark of the beast. I don't want to get into that fully, but that's what Paul is talking about, the rapture and the Christians who didn't take the mark of the beast being gathered to him and going to heaven. So this is what Paul is talking about. Verse 3. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. Now, Paul is saying to the Christians, don't let anybody deceive you. Because this is a, I'm speaking to you prophecy right now that has not happened yet. So Paul is saying, don't let anyone deceive you. And remember, that's how Satan works with the Christian. He deceives the Christian, but he, the unbelievers, he blind their minds. But the Christians, he deceived them into making them think that what they're doing when they rebel against God is the right thing to do. So Paul is saying, don't let anyone deceive you in any way. For that day will not come until the rebellion occurs. What day? The day of the rapture. It will not happen. The day of the rapture will not happen until the rebellion occurs. I had to ask the spirit, what is this rebellion Paul is speaking about? The church is rebelling against God. Christ is not going to come until the rebellion occurs. And the man of lawlessness is revealed. The man doomed to destruction. This is the Antichrist Paul is speaking about. Let me finish reading and I'll get into a little dialogue. Verse 4. He will oppose 
this man will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worship so that he sets himself up in God's temple pro pro proclaiming himself to be God proclaiming, proclaiming himself to be God now what Paul is saying here that number one the rapture will not happen until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. This is the Antichrist. This is the man that Prince Charles was speaking about when he gave his first message to the world leaders after he became king. He said that, you could Google this or look it up on YouTube. He said that all world governments should give their power and money to one man so he can solve the world problems. This one man, this is who Paul is talking about, the Antichrist. The one world dictator who will come and take over the entire world governments and turn them into one government, a one world religion, and a one world currency. This is the man that's doomed to destruction. The man that goes to Israel, go into the temple of God, the temple with the big gold dome. He goes into the temple of God and sets himself up, proclaiming himself to be God. And then he wants the whole world to worship him. So this is the man Paul is talking about. But let's go back to the rebellion. So notice the rebellion will not, the day of the Lord will not happen until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. This is when Jesus Christ will show himself. Now, I want to get into details about the Antichrist, but not today. I want to get into detail about the churches rebelling against God. Now, when I read the scripture, I didn't quite know how to take it, so I had to ask the Holy Spirit for help. Holy Spirit gave me help. So turn your Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Timothy highlights the rebellion of the churches even better. Listen to what Timothy said. 1 Timothy chapter 4, starting in verse 1. The Spirit clearly says that in the last days, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. This is what Paul is talking about. In the last days, some Christian will abandon the faith. What's the faith? The faith in Jesus Christ, trusting in God. They will abandon that. They will say, oh man, this faith is not taking me nowhere. Jesus... I'm, I'm still in debt. Oh, I'm, I'm still not rich yet. I can't follow Jesus no more. They will leave the faith, abandon it completely, and do what? Follow deceiving spirits. What did Paul say? Don't let no one deceive you. So now these Christians are going to leave the faith in God and follow deceiving spirits. And these deceiving spirits are going to teach them demonic things. So, the rebellion is Christians leaving the faith of Jesus Christ and following different teachings from demons. Why did that happen? Why did these Christians allow this to happen? Why is these Christians... Letting this happen to them. Let me read you this verse. Turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Let me show you why these Christians are rebelling against God. Listen. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. This is what Paul said to the churches in Corinth. But I am afraid... That just as Eve was deceived, deceived by Satan's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Did you hear that? Paul was telling the Christians then and us now that he's afraid that just as Eve was deceived by Satan in the Garden of Eden, he's afraid that our minds somehow may be led astray from our devotion to Christ. So Satan works on a Christian's mind daily. 
only that's the only weapon he have. He attacks the minds of Christians. The only weapon, listen to me, my brothers and sisters, the only weapon Satan has against you is sending negative thoughts, negative ideas, and negative suggestions through your mind. Because as the Bible says, when we was baptized, God gave us the mind of Christ. So Satan is going to attack that repeatedly. So this is why these Christians have rebelled against God. Satan has tampered with their minds and they believe that what they're doing is right when it's totally wrong. Pay attention to what, where I'm going. Listen to, look, look at this. These Christians believe that marrying same-sex couples in the house of God, in church, is right in their eyes. When God already said that he hates same-sex marriage, it's an abomination. Didn't God burn down Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounded cities that was indulging in homosexual activity? So why are these pastors marrying same-sex couples in church? I would call that a rebellion. A rebellion is nothing but disobedience against a higher authority. That's rebellion. If God said, do not marry two men or two women, why would you do it? And especially in God's church. So that's a rebellion against God. Look at the next one. Most pastors, they bring in transvestite men dressed like women into the churches to teach little kids Sunday school. Come on, come on. How can you do something like that? And call yourself the church of God. No, you're the church of the devil. I've read in, 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 in one um one story that you don't see these things on the news because the news is not going to do this and portray these things. You have to dig deeper. One church put in stripper poles in the house of God. And the, the pastor said, oh, we're praise dancing. We're going up and down the pole, praise dancing. I guess they, I guess they call themselves imitating Jesus coming from heaven down to earth and going back up to heaven. But that's still foolishness. These are stripper poles in strip clubs. And you have your, your members sliding up and down the pole say you're praise dancing to God. Come on, man. That has to be foolishness. Your mind is deceived. That's wrong, but you think it's right. Satan has deceived these church leaders' minds. Look at uh, the, the big-time church member that were caught with P. Diddy. How can you be a church member at a P. Diddy party? There's no way you could spread the message of, of Christ at a P. Diddy party. Because the only thing at a P. Diddy party is about money and homosexuality. So what are you doing there? Look at all these other preachers who have been accused of, of, of taking money from people with through their prosper, prosperity teachings. One pastor, he got uh, three private jets, a private runway in the back of his yard. You never once read in the scriptures that Jesus spoke about prosperity, becoming rich. You never seen the disciples give a message about becoming rich. But these pastors... All of their message, all of their message throughout the years has been prosperity. You all know who they are. These pastors have been deceived by the devil. We all know, like I said in the beginning, the devil used the churches in the way he feels it should be. And the only reason why Satan is doing that is because when it's time for his son, the Antichrist, to come out, he don't want no interference. So the churches must rebel against God so the Antichrist won't have no problems with spreading his lies to the people in the world that he is God. Because think about it. If the churches were really doing what they're supposed to do from God, there's no room for the Antichrist to come out. Because if we're pushing the message of God in society, then there's no way the Antichrist has room to come out to issue out the mark of the beast. There's no way. But it's all part of the plan, my brothers and sisters. Some churches must fall away, the big mega ones, because the little ones, they don't have no influence into the world. They might have influence in their community, 
but not in the world. Why? Because they're not on social media. You have to think about that. You have to pay attention to the churches that's on social media. That's big. They, they, their, their messages get seen around the world. Those are the churches that Satan is after. I mean, he's after the little ones too, but not as much as the big ones that can spread all over God's messages throughout the world. Imagine you have a, one of those major churches telling you the Antichrist is getting ready to show his face. Do not take the mark of the beast. Stay having faith in God. Have you ever any church, big time pastor say those things? No. So Satan has to rebel against these churches so they can rebel against God. Look at how Satan set it up. Now the body of Christ is divided. You have Jehovah Witness, seven day Baptist. Jehovah Witness is saying we're better than seven day. That's stupidity. How can the body of Christ, Christ is the head, pay attention, Christ is the head, pay attention to me. Christ is the head. The church is the body. How can Jehovah Witness say we're better than seven day? That's like the arm telling the leg, I'm better than you. That's foolishness. Satan has divided the churches. And you already know, once there's division in any family, church family, your regular family, once there is division, God leaves. His presence leaves and Satan comes in and ruin everything. And that's exactly what's happening in the churches. By not unifying. Remember, all churches are supposed to be unified. We're the body, but we're not unified. All churches are supposed to be unified. That way, the presence of God, his spirit, reigns, rules. But since we're divided, God's presence is withdrawn from the churches, giving room for Satan to come in and deceive who he can deceive. So, my brothers and sisters, these churches have rebelled against God, leading the way for the Antichrist to come out and issue out the mark of the beast to, to everyone, to whole society, the whole nations, the whole world. Because that's what the Bible said in Revelation. He will issue out the mark of the beast to everyone. Rich, poor, whether you're locked up in prison or you're free in the world, everybody's going to be issued out the mark. But it's a choice. If you take it, God's presence is withdrawn from you. And basically, you're ending up in hell because that's what the Bible said. If you take the mark of the beast, you will face the wrath of God. You will not be caught up in the rapture. If you're a Christian, you will not be caught up in the rapture if you take the mark of the beast. And when the rapture comes, you will face the wrath of God, Revelation 16. So, this is the time that these pastors are supposed to buckle down and, and tell the congregation, do not give up on Christ. Do not follow deceiving spirits. Do not give up on Christ. What does Christ tell us? He will be with us until the end. And he meant that. You stay with him. He stays with you. Do not rebel against Christ. You're not going to like it. You will eventually end up in hell. If you rebel against Christ. So I'm here as a voice of, 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 of Christ, a Christian, a disciple, to tell you churches, do not give up on Christ. Do not go with the world. Stay with God. No matter if it's trials and tribulation, you stay with God because at the end, you will get your crown of life. But if you rebel against God in the end, that's fire. Eternity. There's no probation period in hell. You're, you're not going to do two months and go to heaven. No, you're in hell. Once you're in hell, you're in hell forever. So my brothers and sisters, if the churches that you are attending is not preaching the message of God and all you hear is prosperity, riches, it's time for God to bless you. Uh, God will exalt you into, into your big house and your Bentleys. You need to leave that church. You need to leave that church and find a church that speaks about sin, that speaks about repenting, that speaks about living a life of a Christian, that the race is not for the swift, but who can endure. You need to listen to a pastor who, who preach about hardships and how to stay in the faith. That's what you need to hear. You don't need to hear prosperity. 
Because if you do the right thing and obey God, Jesus say, I will bless you. What did the Bible say? What did Jesus say in Matthew? Seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness and everything else would be added unto you. So you don't need to hear a message of prosperity. You need to hear a message of obeying God. That's what you need to hear. So with that being said, my brothers and sisters, please keep the faith. Don't give up. Don't rebel against God because the end is near. As you can see, the Bible said these last days are evil. And if you pay attention to what's going on in the world, don't let the foolishness with P. Diddy and sports distract you. Pay attention to what's going on in the world. Pay attention to what's going on in Israel. Because as the Bible say, Israel is the sign of the end of the world. When you see all these things happening, let, be un, let the reader understand that the end is near. That's what Jesus said. When you see all these things, wars going on in Israel, and if you pay attention to Israel right now, all type of wars is going on. Innocent kids are being blown up. There's some foolishness going on in Israel right now. So we need to pay attention so when the time comes, it won't catch us off guard. And we can overcome the Antichrist and his mark of the beast. So that's my message to you all. Church leaders, stay having faith in Jesus. Stay trusting in God, no matter what you're going through. Do not, I repeat, do not rebel against God because you will not like it. So may you all have a wonderful day in the mighty name of Jesus. I love you all. Amen.